Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about realistic projects. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you describe what a realistic project should look like? And to give you a little bit of context on this one, it was posted on a video that I made where I tried to explain to you how my own personal training regimen or coding strategy looks basically in order to learn and get better and do all these sorts of things right and in that video I tried to describe to you that I have a a mindset where I always go for projects that seem realistic that has a practical use case of some sort because I one part of course is that that's more closely related to the sort of work you were going to do at a professional level but it all it also is something that I do because I feel that if you make something that is too trivial or something that isn't real at least I feel demotivated by it because I know like this is this is not realistic and I am a big like I don't know how to describe it, it's like ingrained into my backbone. Every fiber of my being requires realism in anything I do. If there is no practical value, if you're teaching me something that I can't use for anything, I don't want to learn it. I get like it's the most boring thing in the world to me. And my pro personal projects are no exception. But if I'm going to describe a realistic project, I'm a little bit unsure how like I understand the question, I just don't really understand the ambiguity of a realistic product. So I will try to give you like a description of this because to me this should be an intuitive thing. So when I say a toy, I talk about something that you have made that is in no way intended to solve any type of problem or it's not intended in any way to be used by anybody and this can be practically anything if you create for example I mean making toys or very small applications it's not a bad thing I do it too it's like unrealistic projects uh, these simple little learning projects they are useful like there I have like for me there are a dime a dozen I have if you go to my github repository I mean I have hundreds I think or at least over a hundred different projects some of them are like complete well a lot of them are complete garbage some of them are for this channel and some of them are like just yeah I thought that I mean there was a, once upon a time I was learning how to use angular and I was like oh cool I'll just make this silly little web page that just kind of start starts up right how do I set up an angular project I don't know so I'll try it and so you, sh you can tap away and then you say yeah this is how it works and then you save the code or I do at least I always save all the code that I ever write practically and uh, then you iterate and you go and do the next little silly project until you get to a point where you feel comfortable making something that is actually intended to be used in some way and that's the thing that I define as a realistic product a realistic product is something that you have made that is intended because that is at the core of what you do as a software developer your purpose is to solve problems to create technical solutions or digital solutions that that takes away a problem or creates enjoyment or something like that it, there's a purpose to what you're doing and if the thing that you're making has no other purpose than yeah, I just want to build this for me and it's not I'm probably never gonna touch it again then it's not a realistic project you don't have to make something that is like a you know a Facebook application or a big website or something like that it can be small things as well if we talk about realistic products I can give you a few of the ones that I've made myself uh, one uh, and we can talk about the different types of them so I create like uh, way back in in the day I had I knew that I was really 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 shitty at uh, connecting with people on LinkedIn for example and networking and all that stuff so what I did was that I created an automatic uh, system a very small bot that would log into my account and just connect with people that's what it did that, that's the entire thing it and it ran on my laptop 
and my network started growing and I started making connections and things like that. That's a realistic project because basically, I mean, if you didn't know that, that's what more than 90% of all of the uh, recruiters are doing. They have their own digital systems that do all of this for them. And LinkedIn, of course, provides that service. But I, I'm a programmer, so I don't want to pay for something I can build myself. And other examples of projects was I, cre I had a... I had a few teammates in one of the teams uh, at my company in the user relationship department who had an issue with where th their work process basically was fairly a little bit of a, an ad hoc process and they had a lot of uh, manual things that they needed to do. I can't give in I can't go into exact details because it's of course company secrets and all of that good stuff. But the basic idea is that they needed to map information from a lot of different websites. So I created a web crawler, a very simple web crawler where like just a platform where they could search for the information that they needed. And all that did was the dumbest thing in the world. It just proxied the request directly to Google search engine, got the results back. Uh, the reason was simply because I wanted to keep them within the platform because I needed the meta information that came with the, the search results in order to execute the next step. And then the crawler had now the information that it needed and it crawled those websites and just pulled out like assets and like information that they needed and so forth. And all the stuff that they manually needed to click through and like find could now like just be found by the crawler in a fraction of a second. The second iteration of that, which unfortunately because I like we I built it and we kind of used it, but uh, I didn't get more capacity to further the develop it, w was to move it over to actually doing this per automation because we could actually get it to a point where a lot of the stuff that they do in their daily job could com be completely automated by just having a system that crawled the web and actually executed certain tasks that they needed to get executed. So that's a realistic project and with actual stakeholders and real people actually using it. And then we can go like really low level, like something that's really, really small. That was pretty cool. Um, in At another job that I had, I created, I th you think you can still go and find it actually, I haven't touched that project in years. It's called Sassy Stats, if I remember correctly. So I had this problem at, it w at, at a job where basically we had a lot of SAS files and we didn't really know how to refactor them because we didn't know if we could clean up those SAS files. So I created a little CLI that parsed all of the SAS files and just gave some stats. Like told us, all right, these things here are like, this is how many functions we have, this is how many variables we have, and these are like unused things or stuff like that. So you can kind of see, oh, I can remove this thing because there's no one else in the code base that is actually using it or like stuff like that. It was a dirt simple thing and it was perfect for the situation. We used it like, I think once or twice and then we moved on, but it was still a realistic problem because they had an actual problem. And then I've created um, CLIs in, this was one that was re pretty fun as well, which was in Rust, which makes it even better, where my girlfriend likes to play MMORPG games. And of course, well, I used to, because not, but now I'm much, much more into the lounge experience of the single player RPG. But in those games, of course, there's a lot of repetition and daily quests and stuff like that that you need to execute. So I created her a small program, or CLI, where she could basically just input a key combination where it would replay. It, like it would just simulate uh, the key presses, like it was as if it was a virtual keyboard. And so she could just have a, com a character keep her, uh, keep her in, the, in the game by jumping up and down or having it click on a specific point when the respawn of a resource happened or stuff like that so she could go and eat or like do something else while the game in a very basic manner played itself. It wasn't a full scale bot like you can buy because like that's a much more serious task of course but this thing was a very simple thing that I could build. So those are some examples of like realistic projects and you can of course go even further. I mean I used to work on a startup, my own startup with a few other guys where we built them. I think it was a, it was a mobile app, and uh, you develop a an, an actual application where you have actual users that are going to use the thing, and you can put it at any level. It's the really the, 
really the only thing that matters at least when I say that you should deal with a realistic project is that you need a problem that is non-trivial where your intention is to actually solve that problem because the thing is if you don't have that it's so easy for you to make a toy and a toy is very easy to just tweak and when, when something gets hard when you hit the wall in a, a, you you are so likely to just change the scope of what you're doing to make it easier on yourself but when you're working in a real company and you're actually doing this for real you can't just say to your stakeholder no uh, this is too hard for me to learn so I need you to change the specification and this is a way a really good way for you to get yourself in that position where you actually have to go and keep on going until either you bo you're bored with the thing and then you do something else or you actually solve the problem so what I want you to take away from this is that for me a realistic project is just a project that has an actual problem, a real problem associated with it and uh, you can of course make as many toys as you want and just play around. I mean there's no right answer to how to get better at programming as long as you're learning and you're enjoying yourself and you keep going that's what you should go for but I really urge you to think about trying to solve actual problems things that you intend to be used because when you're in that situation you can't just make things easier on yourself by changing how the problem it what the problem is you can you can give up and that's fine and then just do something else or you're gonna have to learn how to problem solve until you solve a problem that you actually need to get solved and that's going to prepare you a lot for real life because in real life at a real company you're not able to say no uh, I don't know how this works and then just go home you have to figure it out have a great day